The SCP universe is filled with dangerous, scary, funny, and useful anomalies. The SCP Lockdown mod adds a few of these anomalies to Minecraft. I will be spending 100 days in an SCP-filled Minecraft. I will go from a lowly D-class all the way up to the director of my own site. Now, I know Forge Labs already did a 100 days SCP video, but let's be honest, he really had no idea what was going on, so I'm gonna show him how it's done. You know the drill by now. I got wood and stone tools. I almost died to a skeleton. I gathered food and healed, I killed some sheep, and made a bed. I found a ravine and went mining for iron. I got jumped by some zombies. I had two bones from the skeleton I killed, and managed to tame two wolves. I crafted an arrow-proof vest. It's stronger than an iron chestplate and takes more iron to craft. I crafted the rest of my armor and a shield. I also crafted an iron pick and sword. I then entered a large cave and did some more mining. One zombie dropped a heart. I can use this to craft my own SCPs. As I was mining, I came across a child. It gave me quite a scare. I explored and came across an abandoned SCP facility. I heard the sounds of the anomalies inside. I dug out the entrance. I left some stuff outside. I entered the facility. I found some keycards and a screwdriver. I got a bow and some batteries. I opened one door and found some crabs. Another door led to some flamingos. I decided to fight the crabs first. Fighting the crabs in the water is a lot easier than fighting them on land. I found some telekill alloy, a strong metal in this mod. I continue fighting the crabs. Luckily, they can't use stairs. I died for the first time. The crabs make you slow after they hit you so you can't get away. I managed to kill the crab and get my stuff back. I then went to kill the flamingos. After I killed the flamingos, I did some looting and found a level 4 keycard. The highest level is 5. I also found a device that lets me turn paper into blank documents. I need blank documents to create my own SCPs. I moved my stuff into the facility. I decided to make it my base of operations. I spent a lot of time mining for iron. I made the document crafter. It takes 8 iron blocks then another 64 iron ingots. This will allow me to create my own SCPs. I found a desert pyramid. I didn't really find anything useful besides a single golden apple. I found a village close to my facility. I raided the crops. The village and pillage update improved villages a lot, didn't it? Look at this dirt floor. I harvested some flowers since some of the SCP recipes require them. I returned to the village and looted the blacksmith. I found another desert temple with another two gapples and some gold. I found a third desert temple with two more gapples. I crafted my first SCP today, 249, the coffee machine. 
it can dispense an infinite amount of potions. I went outside and placed it. It blends in nicely, doesn't it? I now have access to any liquid in the game, any potion and lava as well. I then crafted SCP-143, the Bladewood Grove. Now is a good time to mention how spawning the SCPs work. Shift right clicking shows a highlight of where the building will spawn. It will not render if there are any blocks in the way though. Right clicking always spawns it and will delete any blocks in the way. I didn't realize this at the time so I'm trying to clear an area to spawn it. I didn't place it until day 16. It spawned 3 blocks in the air on grass in the middle of a desert. The trees in the grove are really strong. Touching the leaves does damage. The leaves can be used to craft tools and armor. This is the strongest material in the game, even stronger than diamond. The leaves act like cactus, meaning they destroy any item that touches it, so I use shears to collect the leaf block itself. You need the wood too, but look how long it takes to break. I'm using an iron axe. Another thing to know, when you spawn in a building, you can find supplies in desks and on shelves, so I was able to collect some leaves and saplings right off the bat. This is good because I don't think the trees drop saplings. I broke a stack of leaves and nothing. I even went into a creative world and spawned a lot of leaf blocks and didn't get a single sapling. I couldn't find any information about this online, so if anyone knows anything, tell me please. I did learn that another SCP spawned in with the armor, so I made that. SCP-250, most of an allosaurus. Unfortunately, it did not spawn in with the OP armor, but did spawn with SWAT armor. This stuff is not quite diamond level, but it is better than iron. It takes multiple blocks of iron to craft, so finding it is still good. The chestplate is worse than the arrowproof vest though. Some SCPs require fish, so I did a little fishing in the flooded portion of the facility. I made another document, SCP-529, Josie the Half-Cat. I spawned in the Half-Cat. Josie got her own battle station in here. I decided to craft SCP-127, the Living Gun. You need blood to craft it, and you can get it by using a syringe on yourself. I went mining for diamonds. I found a mineshaft and tested out the gun on some cave spiders. It does a decent amount of damage. I almost died to a creeper. I found telekill alloy ore. I spent all day mining, but found no diamonds. I made SCP-2761, Bananazilla. I spawned in Bananazilla. I killed an Enderman. A creeper killed an Enderman. I got chased by an Enderman as the Minecraft soundtrack taunted me. None of them dropped pearls, by the way. I found another research facility. It looked like it was the same as mine, so I didn't bother clearing it. I found a buried zombie dungeon. No useful loot. Look at this.
I looked for more, or actually any diamonds. I almost got a Phil Zud. All this lava and no diamonds. I even started strip mining and still got nothing. I mined up until day 30. I covered the zombie spawner. I was hoping I could use it to farm hearts. It did not go well. In a world filled with murderous SCPs, I died to a zombie. After collecting no hearts, I abandoned the idea. If you're wondering why I didn't make a grinder, the answer is, I didn't feel like it. I made SCP-109, Infinite Canteen, SCP-1025, Encyclopedia of Diseases, and SCP-902, The Final Countdown. I spawned in my new SCPs. The Infinite Canteen didn't do anything. I thought it would be like an endless water bucket, but no. I didn't dare open the encyclopedia, since it can give you any debuff in the game, and some of them outright kill you. I spawned in the final countdown and started hearing a ticking noise. The SCP wiki said anyone who hears the ticking will start to think it's ticking down to something bad. The ticking is coming from this box. The ticking is going to be in the background for the rest of the video. Sorry guys. In other news, I made SCP-524, Walter the Omnivorous Rabbit, SCP-160, Predator Drone, SCP-1057, Absence of Shark, and SCP-4307, Electromarine Praetorian. I spawned the rabbit. According to the wiki, Walter can eat anything. I wasn't sure if that would include me. I tried to feed him a piece of paper. It took me a whole day to find a place to spawn my next skip, Absence of Shark. Someone put raw beef in the filing cabinet. I spawned in the drone and suffocated to death. I know I'm not on hardcore, but if I was, this death definitely wouldn't count. I went to get my stuff and didn't realize I walked right into the containment chamber of the Predator drone. Luckily, it didn't attack me. I spawned in the Electromarine Praetorian. Wasn't sure what to expect with this one. They were weird lizard things. I crafted SCP-248, 110%. This can improve things by an extra 10%. A piece of lapis can become a diamond. I guess diamonds are only 10% better than lapis. This was good because I needed a diamond to craft SCP-914, Clockworks. I spawned in the Clockworks. I thought this skip would be able to turn my iron tools into diamond ones, but it does not. It is able to fully repair my equipment though. I then found out the 110% could turn my iron gear to diamond. I improved another piece of lapis to diamond. The clockworks is able to double your ore output. One iron ore turns into two ingots. I traded some of my iron for emeralds since you need them to make the 110% sticker. I killed an enderman and got a pearl. I crafted SCP-939 with many voices, SCP-063, the world's Beth Toth brush, trademarked, SCP-346, Terry the Pterodactyl. I used an ender pearl to make an SCP. I wasn't planning on going to the end in this playthrough, so I didn't bother saving pearls. I would come to regret this. I used it to make SCP-1437, a hole to another place. I made another 110% and used it to upgrade my iron pick to diamond. I used the clockworks on one-to-one -one mode to turn green dye into brown dye. 
Actually, I turn green dye to yellow, to light blue, to magenta, to orange, to white, to well, you get the idea. I'm playing Minecraft on version 1.12. It actually doesn't have a brown dye, it has cocoa beans. I need the cocoa beans for certain SCPs and to make cookies for other SCPs. I use some of the beans to make SCP-143-FR, Mesozoic Chicken Coop. I collected some gravel and clay. Then I made SCP-019, Monster Pot. I made some concrete. Then I made SCP-1162, Hole in the Wall. And SCP-173, The Sculpture. Nope. I started to spawn in my new SCPs. The toothbrush can delete any block from existence. It also doesn't lose durability. I spawned in the two holes. This hole will randomly shoot out items. The other hole will return something that you have lost, but will take something from you. I spawned in with many voices and started hearing witches and villagers. Then I spawned in the chicken coop. It was full of raptors. Power raptors. I ran past some skeletons and decided to look down the pit. Why would I do this when one arrow could knock me in and kill me? I had gotten night vision goggles from one SCP and decided to test them out. I made SCP-005, Skeleton Key. I spawned in some more SCPs. The key can open any door. Next up, 173, the OG. He was able to move even when I was looking at him. I guess the Minecraft engine isn't designed for something like this. I decided to get closer. Whoa, I didn't think he would be able to go through that door. That was terrifying. This was also my first containment breach. It makes sense that it's 173. I had some trouble getting him back in. The skeleton key keeps doors open indefinitely. Idiot. I can't open the door. I need to look away to open it and 173 is too close. Damn boy, he's thick. I let him away and broke the door. I got him back inside. This was a little scary but awesome at the same time. I actually felt like a D-class for a second. I placed down more SCPs. I almost had another containment breach. I went looking for lava. I tried to see if the toothbrush would work on mobs. It did not. I later remembered it only works on dead or inorganic matter. I found a lava lake and collected some obsidian. In case you're wondering, the toothbrush does delete obsidian. Stupid. I used some obsidian to make a nether portal. My nether spawn was not good. I spawned in a cave. I mined some netherrack because some SCPs required it. Can I point out how ugly netherrack was in 1.12? I gather some quartz as well. In case you're wondering, the toothbrush cannot delete bedrock. I used the toothbrush to dig out of the cave since it wouldn't lose durability. I eventually dug out into a larger area. I collected some glowstone and soul sand. After exploring for a while, I found another fortress. I didn't enter it right away. I decided to leave the nether and use the coffee machine to get some fire resistance potions. I got lost in the nether and started running low on food so I picked some mushrooms to make mushroom stew. I got a gas tier. I need a total of three of them to make all the SCPs. I got another gas tier. 
I didn't get out of the nether until day 48. I lost some footage and got two blaze rods at one point. I think I found another fortress or something. I later remembered it only works on dead or inorganic matter. Four fucking pixels? I made SCP-458, the never-ending pizza box. SCP-330, take only two. SCP-553, crystalline butterflies. SCP-668, 13th inch chef's knife. SCP-148, telekill alloy. I repaired my gear. I spawned in more SCPs. The chef knife prevents mobs from fighting back when it's being held. This rabbit doesn't run away. It is a little wonky though. I got some pizza. I can get as much pizza as I want from this, as long as I'm hungry. I want to know, does pineapple belong on pizza? Tell me in the comments below. I personally really like pineapple on pizza. Even if you're holding the knife, mobs can still attack if they get close enough. I tried to kill an enderman holding the knife. He would not aggro onto me. After all that, no pearl. I spawned in more SCPs. I took only two. I made SCP-023. Black Shuck, and SCP-178, 3D Specs. I killed some squid. Then I made SCP-053, Young Girl, SCP-280, Eyes in the Dark, SCP-594, Electric Sheep, and SCP-538, Shadow Spiders. I placed my new SCPs. You can't have a 100 days video without a stupid mistake, can you? I wanted to get a closer look at the black shuck. Even though it's hostile and even looking at him can kill you. He got out and almost killed me. That's containment breach number two. I left it there and spawned in more SCPs. Remember when I said right clicking an SCP will spawn it in and delete all the blocks in the way? Yeah, I accidentally spawned an SCP in the middle of another one. I closed Minecraft using the task manager, hoping it would shut the game down before autosaving. It didn't work. To make matters worse, I died to the electric sheep. Yep, they're hostile too. I killed the sheep and recovered my stuff. I got a piece of thunder mutton. It even got into the black shuck pen. I guess it's good it got out. I hope there was a way to undo skip placements. All it takes is one misclick, so there must be a way to undo it. If there is, I didn't find one. I made a command baton knowing full well it wouldn't work. I think it allows you to control mobs. I then came to terms with the fact that I would have to tear it all down by hand. That's what I did for the next two days. I noticed Walter the Rabbit got out. I guess he's able to eat right through the containment chamber. That's breach number three. I got him back in really easily thanks to the carry on mod. It allows me to pick up small animals and tile entities. At some point, I got infected by the shadow spiders. I got nausea, weakness, and mining fatigue. I had to fight a horde of zombies. Honestly, I should have let myself be killed by them since it would be better than the alternative. Shadow infestation. None of the effects were counting down. I didn't know what to do. I had no milk, the nearest cow was hundreds of blocks away, and it would probably do nothing anyway.
Oh, so that happened. When I died, I spawned a few shadow spiders and some water. I killed the spiders and continued the demolition. I killed the rest of the shadow spiders. They were really hard to hit. I killed all of them but got infected again. I went to find a cow and got filled with aggression. I would hit any mob in front of me uncontrollably. The milk was useless too. I got nausea again and had to deal with it all the way back to my base. I turned 21 last month and this is how I felt after I got drunk for the first time. This also happened when I got drunk for the first time. Now I have to deal with spiders inside my base and of course I got infected again. I didn't record it but I jumped off a cliff to get rid of the infection. One of my dogs died too. I spent the last few days destroying the two messed up facilities. I remade the shadow spiders and electric sheep and spawned them properly this time. I also made SCP-015 Pipe Nightmare, SCP-822 Landmine Cactus, SCP-2295 Bear with a Heart of Patchwork, and SCP-079 Old AI. I looked at the shadow spiders without dying for once. I spawned in the pipe nightmare but didn't enter it since I didn't want to die inside. O79 wanted a bigger range control. I did not. We compromised and I got my way without him getting anything. Just like marriage, am I right, fellas? So much for blast resistant glass. I spawned the sheep again. I made SCP 106, the old man. I tried to recontain the black shuck. I decided to store my stuff in a cabinet in case I died. I got him back in and I did die. I then tried to get my keycard armor and sword back. I died again. By the time I got back, my stuff had despawned. I died again. I should have just cut my losses, but I wanted to recover whatever I could. I also grabbed all my stuff back. In the process, I looked at it and got the Black Shuck's curse. I got my items back, including a level 3 keycard. For some reason, I thought there was more stuff, so I entered his cell again. He got out again. I lost all my good stuff this time. I died some more. I got an idea to use water to push him away. It worked, and I managed to get my items back and recontain him. Hello there. I used 110% to upgrade my sword to diamond. I also upgraded a helmet and leggings to diamond. I spawned in SCP-106. I needed a level 4 keycard to get in and I lost my only one. I made SCP-1507 Pink Flamingo, SCP-1048 Builder Bear, SCP-261 Pandimensional Vending Machine, SCP-689 Haunter in the Dark. I crafted another level 4 keycard. I spawned in the pan vending machine. I used the VM and got a piece of candy and a poisonous potato. You can get any food in the game from this anomaly. I put down the pink flamingos. Builder bear. I couldn't see him inside though. Haunter in the dark. There's no way I'm going in there. I needed some beetroot for an SCP so I grew some. I made SCP-500, Panacea, SCP-912, Autonomous SWAT Armor. I spawned in the armor. I got quite the fright. I spawned the drugs. I went to the coffee machine and got some fire resistance potions. I upgraded iron boots to diamond. I went back to the nether and got really lost. I didn't find the fortress again until day 71. I collected some nether ward and gathered some blaze rods. I got out of the nether on day 73. I made SCP-087, the stairwell. I made a nether ward farm. I made SCP-131, the iPods, and SCP-1074, Stendhal's Nightmare. I picked up some vines and lily pads for more SCPs. 
I used the lily pads to make SCP-811, Swamp Woman. I used the vines to craft SCP-020, Invisible Mold. I made SCP- SCP-3199, Humans Refuted, and SCP-096, The Shy Guy. I placed the SCPs. The stairs gave me anxiety. I wasn't going to look at the picture. I tried to hear the cries of the shy guy, but I didn't hear anything. I tamed the iPods. They are so cute. I continued placing down the SCPs. I found a full set of sturdy armor in the Humans Refuted building. This is the strongest armor in the game. Nope, not touching that. I made SCP-2430, Brain Dead Hitler, SCP-012, A Bad Composition, SCP-682, The Hard to Destroy Reptile. I used a lot of my ender pearls to make SCP-966, Sleep Killer, and I made SCP-002, The Living Room. The security for the lizard was intense. It's like they don't want him to leave or something. I spawned in Hitler, but a turret started shooting me. I spawned in Bad Composition next. I actually thought I had spawned in Hitler, so I ran in without thinking. The music will pull you towards it and start killing you. I managed to resist the urge to continue the peace with my own blood. If I enter the living room, I will die. Bit ironic. I didn't record it, but I made SCP-718, Eyeball, and SCP-513, Cowbell. Walter got out again. I put him back. I placed the Eyeball. Like bad composition, it pulled my gaze to it. I spawned the Cowbell. Sorry I didn't interact with the SCPs more. If I do a sequel, I will allow myself to die to more SCPs. I upgraded another piece of lapis and crafted an enchanting table. I enchanted some books hoping to get Silk Touch since some SCPs require ice or grass in the recipe. I actually had a Silk Touch book. I must have gotten it from a temple. I put Silk Touch on my pick. I mined some grass blocks. I tried to get poisonous potatoes for more skips, but I didn't have any luck. I used the Pan Dimensional Vending Machine since it has a chance to drop poisonous potatoes. I didn't get any, but I did get some apples and a melon, which was good. I converted the melon slice to seeds. I then planted the seeds. One skip requires dragon breath. I wanted to end the 100 days with this skip, so that means I need to fight the dragon. I would used up all my pearls on other SCPs though, so I had to hunt for more endermen. I harvested my melons. I went looking for ice. While I was out, I found another facility. I mined inside to take a quick look around. I saw a weird vase thing and started hearing noises. I left the facility to find ice. I got sick. And died. I took a screenshot of my cord so I could get my stuff back. I made it back to my stuff and fought a zombie that looked like me. I found another facility and somehow got the same infection. I didn't even look at a vase this time. I died again. I collected my stuff and gave up the search for ice. I crafted SCP-1000, Bigfoot. I had collected more ender pearls on my ice hunt and looked for the stronghold. I found it and some diamonds. I explored the stronghold for a while looking for the portal. It wasn't a big stronghold and I looked everywhere multiple times. I broke walls thinking there might be a hidden passage, but nothing. This may be considered cheating, but I actually created a new world of this seed in creative mode to find the portal room. 
I found it in the middle of the ocean by itself. It wasn't connected to anything. I found the portal room on day 90. I got swarmed by some silverfish. I towered up and over to the spawner. I placed my eyes, but was three short. I was also short one blaze power, so I went back to the nether. I got my rod. I still needed pearls, so as I waited for nightfall, I spawned in Bigfoot. I made SCP-124, Fertile Soil. That night, I went searching for Endermen. Hi. I managed to find and kill a couple of Endermen, and they all dropped pearls. There's like only a 1 in 7.5 trillion chance of that happening. I placed the last few eyes. I tried to set my spawn point, and remembered you can't set the spawn point during the day in 1.12. I then jumped into the end. I began to take out the towers. I got the dragon breath right away. You guys know how the dragon fight goes by now. I had a lot of trouble taking out the cage towers. I would build up and immediately get knocked down by the dragon. I know pearl clutching is easy, but I still felt cool doing it. I looked right at an enderman. I should have brought my scramble gear. One down, one to go. While fighting the dragon, I ticked off some Bendermen and was unable to fight them off. I had broken my bed, so I was at world spawn. I made it back to my base, grabbed some supplies, and headed back to the end. I'm really good at this kid's game. I got my stuff back. killed the dragon. I got my levels and the egg. After the fight, I crafted SCP-843, Cow Seeds. This isn't the one that needed the dragon breath though. I placed the last two SCPs. Of course the cow is hostile. I got some cow seeds. You'd think I'd plant the seed-based SCP in the anomalous soil, but no, I didn't plant them anywhere. I tried to get poisonous potatoes, but was unsuccessful. You know, I'm essentially an SCP myself. I'm a D-class that can respawn indefinitely. Remind you of anyone? I decided I would be killed by all the SCPs to show them off. I got sent to 106's pocket dimension. I guess I can cross that off the bucket list. The only way out is either by killing him or dying myself. I explored that place all day and never saw him once. I needed to leave soon since I had a special SAP to craft for day 100. I know no one asked, but if I could have any superpower, it would be the ability to create my own pocket dimension. Not like this one though. Eventually, I starved to death. I didn't have a lot of time. The special SCP needed Dragon Breath, and I of Ender, Coarse Fruit, Flint and Steel, Glistening Melon, Gunpowder, and Paper. I had everything except for the Coarse Fruit. Luckily, 110% can upgrade apples. I made SCP-420-J, the best blunt in the world. As the sun rose on day 100, I looked over my facility and took a hit from the blunt.
So what's next? I could do a 200 days in this world. I have more SCPs to make. SCP-106 actually got out when he killed me, so I need to recontain him. I want to die to every SCP just to experience all of them. I don't know if I would do it in the 100 day style though. I would probably just play until I finish the world without documenting my progress every day. I have more 100 day videos I want to make as well. I think the next one will be quite fun. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. I do gaming challenges on this channel and have more 100 days in the works, so subscribe if you don't want to miss them. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers by the end of the year and think we can do it. In the meantime, remember to stay hydrated.